he was he was wearing like this really stupid orange camouflage shirt. That's good, Becky. And do you remember what happened to the man in the orange camouflage shirt? You're listening to the Fun With Horror podcast with your hosts, Scotty and Andrew. Hey everybody, I'm Andrew. And I'm Scotty. And welcome to episode 93 of Fun With Horror, the movie review podcast in which two long-distance best friends give each other horror movies to watch, and then we discuss them the following episode. We only have two rules here at Fun With Horror. Number one, whoever picks the movie has to pick one they've never seen. Mm. And number two, we both have to watch that movie before we discuss it. Heck yeah, we do. And the last one was me, Andrew. And I chose a movie with another name (laughs) called Becky from 2020. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) It's directed by Carrie Murnian and starring Lulu Wilson, Kevin James, and many others we will talk about in this podcast. There is a second director. His name is Jonathan Malott. I I said that. And My hey, everybody! Cut out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what happened. Your mic cut yeah. out. Oops. <laughs> uh, so, and you know, if you guys listen to the end of this episode, you just might get to hear what I'm going to pick for our next episode. <gasps> it's a big surprise coming. For real and for true. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Scotty. How's it going, buddy? It's going well. Oh, whoa! All right. Yeah, I, I, you know, I want to give a little shout out. Oh, please do. I love shout outs. In our last episode, what movie did we discuss, my friend? I believe it was a, a, a movie called Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Man, I wish they still had that narrator and trailers, and I wish it was <laughs> you doing it. <laughs> That's a good payday. I'd do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so... But during that episode, I kind of went off about Mm -hmm. how much I loved the score to the movie. Yeah, yeah. Composed by one Andrew Scott Bell. The Andrew Scott Bell. The Andrew Scott Bell. Well, my friend, (laughs) turns out that Andrew Scott Bell is a really freaking cool dude. Yeah, dude. He messaged me uh, while he was listening (laughs) to the podcast at the gym. Awesome. Listening to our episode. And we ended up having a nice, uh, lengthy little conversation through instant message. And he is just the coolest guy. And he was very appreciative Mm -hmm. of what we said about the movie, obviously. Nice. Because we both liked it. Yeah. Uh, He also, it was very nice because we set out to discuss movies a certain way. Right. And one thing we did with Winnie the Pooh is we discussed the movie in terms of its budget. Right. Yes. Yeah, we did. Keeping its small budget in mind. Mm -hmm. And he appreciated that. And it was nice to get acknowledgement about that as well. But anyway, he's a really cool guy. And we're going to have him on the podcast sometime soon. Dude, it's so awesome. Yeah. What a cool man. Like, I just I genuinely appreciate that he chatted with us and yeah just, what a cool he's so cool he really is what a cool what a cool he's just one of those cools you what know a cool <laughs> I've, i not many all, times do i meet a cool but he's a cool of all the cools <laughs> of all the cools he might be the cools andrew is the cool <laughs> i'm learning words today but hey what you know andrew <laughs> <laughs> yeah scotty my cool Oh, you're you're cool too, buddy. Thanks, man. Have you seen Annabelle Creation? You know, I have. Have you seen Ouija Origin of Evil? Not only have I seen it, we did an episode about it. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. Remember the star of those movies? Are you talking about Lulu Wilson? The Lulu Wilson. She's a cool. 
She is a cool. And she was in a movie called Becky that we watched. I did watch that. I actually picked that. <laughs> you did pick it. <laughs> but before we talk about it, mm-hmm. let's warn everybody. Everybody out there, we are about to spoil Becky. Now, this is the first film, not the sequel, The Wrath of Becky. This is the first film, Becky. Correct. We're going to talk about it. We're going to spoil it. So if you haven't seen it, you might want to pause this and go watch it. I think it's a what? Paramount Plus, buddy? Yes. Yep. Paramount Plus. At least at the time of this recording. Yeah, exactly. Uh, But hey, you know, funny enough. Because you like him so much, I called Kevin James, <laughs> and he's standing outside your apartment. And Uh-oh. if you can give us a three-minute recap in under three minutes, <clears throat> he'll go away peacefully. But if you go over three minutes, Kevin James is going to kill you, buddy. With comedy? With his mall cop <laughs> scooter. <laughs> I'm sure he would appreciate that joke. So, hey, uh, whenever you're ready, my friend. Three-minute oh, recap so, of Becky. For some reason, I totally forgot I'm doing a three-minute recap, so this is going to be interesting. <laughs> I feel uh, like you say that every time. <laughs> I know. I don't know why I forget it. It's like I blank out. All right. Here we go. All right. Here we go. <laughs> All right. I got you for three minutes. Three minutes of the time. So the movie uh, starts out with Becky, who is a, a teenage girl, and her dad. Um, she lost her mom to cancer, and so it's kind of just her and her dad. We also see that at the same time, roughly, there's these convicts led by Kevin James's character, Dominic, who are some real shady guys. And they're in the back of a police car being moved, uh, and they escape. And at the same time, Becky and her dad are going to this cabin that they used to, to, used to live at. And when they arrive there, her dad's girlfriend and son are also there as well to join them, which Becky is not very happy about. Becky storms off. Uh, Dominic, though, they eventually get to this house, and they're kind of dressed like normal civilians, except in their prison attire. And they say they lost their dog, whatever it may be. And then, um, of course, they kind of ransack the house looking for something. Uh, Becky, at this time, is kind of hiding with her dog out in a, a makeshift shed or whatever, um, fort. Eventually, she kind of hears what's going on, and uh, she grabs a walkie-talkie from her room so she can kind of chat with them as well because there's a walkie-talkie in the house. Uh, eventually, uh, we find out that Dominic is there to get this key that was found kind of under like this hidden room in, in Becky's bedroom. She has it. And so he wants it back for whatever reason. So in order to get her to bring it to him, she actually takes her dad out to torture him in the woods, to which she goes out there um, to save him, brings the key, and they actually kill her dad, to which Becky shoves the key into Dominic's eyeball and then runs off. The rest of the movie, I'm going to kind of speed through this because we're going to talk about some of these things. I don't want to spoil anything yet. Uh, But the rest of the movie is essentially Becky going crazy on this group of psychos, uh, killing them in some marvelous ways, which, again, we will talk about because they're fun. Uh, eventually, though, she does end up killing all of them and gets the mo- her, uh, excuse me, her dad's girlfriend and her son out of the house as we wait for the cops to arrive. And then we jump to – actually, at the very beginning, I missed this part. She's talking to a therapist and a police officer about all this, and then it jumps back to that, to which she's saying she forgot kind of everything that happened, and it cuts to credits. <laughs> well, that was less than two and a half minutes. All right. So Kevin James won't kill me? No, I I, I just called him, and he's just telling jokes to your, uh, to your closed door, but he, he knows he's not allowed to come inside. Good. Thanks, Scotty. I was a little oh, nervous. Wait. Okay, now he's leaving. Okay. Oh, Bye, Kevin. Oh, James. I see it on the ring camera. He's gone. <laughs> there you go. Good job, buddy. Good job. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, boy. I've... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So, uh, buddy. Yeah, man. I've seen Becky before. That's right. You have. But you had not, which is why you picked it. That's part of the rules. Now that you have seen Becky, what did you think of it? I thought this movie was a pretty awesome movie, man. 
<laughs> I had a good time with this one, dude. <laughs> well, good. Yeah. <laughs> what what you about go. you? <laughs> well, I tell you, uh, I liked it. Nice. All right. So that's the end of the podcast, everybody. Yep. yep. <laughs> Till next time. <laughs> I think we've used that joke before. That's old. Hey, that's all right. Hey, we, we have new listeners every week, man. And the people that do listen to us have only heard one episode and then yeah. <laughs> they just laugh. They're like, okay. yeah, we just people just listen to one episode. And then we have like a whole <laughs> slew of other people listening to the next episode. <laughs> but nobody has ever heard more than one episode. Of that's right. Before. No one. <laughs> Anyone we talked to are like, yeah, that one was good. But that's all I've heard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was that Psycho Gorman episode. <laughs> then I didn't listen, listen to any more. Gorman one. Go listen, everybody. I don't even know if it's in last place. But anyway. Anyway. (laughs) uh, What was I going to say? Oh, so what was interesting, buddy? Yeah. Speaking of my opinion of this movie Mm -hmm. was I had a certain opinion that I expressed on Letterboxd back the first time I saw this movie. Okay. And I gave it three out of five stars. And I had some quibbles that I mentioned on Letterboxd. And I tell you, I... I did not read my review before uh-huh. rewatching this movie this past week. Okay. And I went back and read my review after I re- rewatched it. Uh-huh. And I I don't I have no idea why I even had those quibbles. Interesting. Okay. So, we'll we'll talk about those. Yeah, 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 for sure. But yeah, you know, the biggest question though, buddy. Yeah. What did you think of Kevin Kevin James, right? That's his name. <laughs> it is. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. No. I, <laughs> so I, I, it's it's rough because people get typecast a lot, obviously in Hollywood. I mean, it happens all the time. Okay. He is a predominantly comedic actor. I mean, he's kind of known. That's what he's known for. He does a lot of comedy movies or and TV shows. Right. So I will say, and I always love when someone goes against the grain. I think that's great. It's some of the some I've seen some of the best acting from some of the best comedians out there in a dramatic role. That being said, I feel like it, with this one, I still saw Kevin James there, kind of that plucky Kevin James. And so, you know, I mean, and it's not. It's that's the that's the thing is like it's not his fault. He didn't yeah. do anything wrong. It's me. I just know him from so many comedy movies and shows that while watching it, I was still like, oh, that's Kevin James, you know, like silly, <laughs> silly guy. Even when he's saying these horrible and racist and awful things, you're still like, oh, it's it's still it's just Kevin James, though. You know what I mean? It's just so, Kevin James. It's just Kevin James. Hey, <laughs> that makes me that makes it sound really bad. Like, oh, you can say racist stuff, Kevin James. That's not what I meant. Um, no, he cannot. But I'm saying it's just it was. You just see Kevin James the, uh, while watching it, I guess. So for me, anyway. that's how that's how you felt is what yeah. you're saying. Yep, that's how I felt. So yeah. you didn't you didn't like him any more or less than you did before, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, it was. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Which okay. is a bummer because, like I said, I like when someone goes against their their typecast. I think that's always fun. Well, I can't find my review of this movie, so I have no idea what I said. Oh. <laughs> Okay. But you'll be happy to know that Lulu Wilson said that Kevin James was a super nice guy in real oh, life. Oh, good. Okay. That's so I good. hope you feel really bad right now because he's a sweetheart. He just came to murder me at my house. I do not <laughs> feel that bad, this guy. But because I told him to. You're right. Good guy, Kevin. Good guy, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> yeah, she said, she said uh, that he was a really nice guy and that – I think the interview that I saw, she was asked if if he maintained his character beyond mm-hmm. when they were shooting. And Lulu said that, no, he didn't. And thank goodness, because he would have been really scary to talk to. Yeah. Because I thought this was my favorite Kevin James thing ever. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he was perfect. I, and not to say that he looks like a white supremacist, but. Right, right, right. I thought he did such a fantastic job as a villain. Right. He's big and imposing. Yeah, for sure. Except except when he's uh standing next to uh yeah. the Robert Maylett <laughs> as Jeez, Apex. He's a big guy. That guy's tall. That guy is awesome. I love that I know. guy. I've seen yeah, I've seen him. 
there's still one you need to see that I've talked to you about called Fun Times, I think it is. And he's he's in that one too. He's it's a horror he's movie. He's in Fun Times. Yeah. No, not oh, maybe it's maybe it's called Good Times. <laughs> no, not Good Times, not Fun Times. Shoot. I'll remember. I'll find out. It's on High Shutter. Times? No, no. <laughs> oh gosh. Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Yeah, that's is he the in one. That? Yep. Yeah. He's okay, a, cool. Spicoli. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> is there anything you didn't care for with this movie besides Kevin James? No, stop it. I'm, I'm just... <laughs> Gosh. So I think I don't know if I'm con- I'm not going to call them quibbles. I'm just going to call them notes because okay. it's not bad. It's just something I was like, hmm, maybe I would have liked that. Maybe not. One thing I, I would have maybe enjoyed and again, maybe not, is why I I mean, I get that Becky was going through some stuff some stuff obviously we see that but was that the reason that she finally like snapped or because i mean she murders people like she (laughs) full-on destroys them this what i what is she 13 or 14 or something i can't remember i mean she's young yeah and she like destroys them in pretty gruesome ways and so i'm like is this does she have like some history like is there some things that so I don't know. I, I thought a backstory might have been cool, but again, maybe not because I still had fun. So I don't know. That's why it's a note, not a quibble. I don't know if it. I have the same. I had the same note, my friend. Really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought about it more upon skimming through it, rewatching mm-hmm. certain scenes for the podcast and stuff. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, she is very violent. Yeah. Because I was going to ask you how you felt about her, like at the beginning. Hmm. If you thought she was, even though she had lost her mother a year prior, right. you thought she was still being a little bit too much of a brat. I didn't necessarily. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, it, it still loss is crazy. Loss is hard. People deal with it in their own ways. So yeah, I was kind of like, I, I get it, I guess. I mean, she's, she's naughty, but you know, that's tough. I mean, she lost a parent at a young age, so. Yeah, and I, I get that it. too. It it you was know. something I I wondered, you know. Yeah. But that the on the other end of the spectrum, mm-hmm. I also thought that maybe her dad, as somebody who should be thinking primarily about his only right. child daughter, right, moved on a little fast. Yes. Yeah. It was a year, and he's I already get, engaged. <laughs> I get dating, but yeah, he was engaged already. Yeah. I thought the same thing. That's a little hard for a kid to take. Yeah, exactly. And I felt the way he did it was like, I mean, there's a way to do it. I feel like not inviting the person there to do it as a like a group. This is a this is a a a father daughter moment that they should have had by themselves. I mean, I like it that it, it could have still been at the cabin, but just the two of them. It could have been a whole. Yeah. I, so yeah, I agree. I just was like, me, that's not the way to do this. He totally ambushed her. Yes, and it's a special place. The cabin is a special place for her when she thinks of their family as a whole unit. Right. Yeah. So I, that was that was kind of weird, but yeah. Yeah. Going back to what you were saying, at the end of the movie, I was just sitting there thinking, "G Louise." Yeah. That's G's Louise, not G Louise. <laughs> G Louise. Uh, G's Louise. Yes. <laughs> she is very violent. Yeah. Yeah, she is, dude. And I don't know. I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it. I'll be interested to see if they explore that a little bit in the sequel, The Wrath of Becky. Right. Here's the other thing that I thought about. I do mm-hmm. remember in my letterboxed review yeah, yeah, yeah. that I mentioned was how did did you feel like she absolutely that it was believable that she got the upper hand on all of those men, adult men. You know, I I I think during it I let it slide a little bit. Like there was a couple moments where I was like, I don't know. But I was like, I'm I don't know. I let it go. Cause I thought <laughs> I even said this my wife. She didn't watch it, but I was like just kind of describing it. And I said, it's almost like home alone. In certain moments where I'm like, it's this girl making these traps. That's a, you know, this kid, I should say, making these traps against these adults. But even with Home Alone, I'm like, would that work? Probably not, but I'm having fun. And it was kind of the same with this. Would this always work? Maybe not. 
but I'm having fun. So I just yeah. But in, in Home Alone, they would have been dead at a certain point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100. <laughs> so maybe this movie is more realistic. That's true. You might be right. Yeah. I think so I just let that disbelief go. Yeah, I don't know. The first time I saw the movie, I I had that thought. This time, I didn't even really think about it. It mm-hmm. seemed plausible to me. Yeah, and that's to me that is a kudos to the movie Mm -hmm. because they make it believable that this little girl she's not like super genius or anything right no huh yeah she just gets the upper hand on these guys who underestimate a 13 year old little girl right very true that's like the first guy she she slides the only thing like he was very scared of a dog very scared especially after he shot one of the other dogs i know he shot the first dog, mm-hmm. but then the second dog was in the fort with Lulu, with Becky. Right. Yeah, it was just kind of weird to me that he didn't just be all shooty-shooty with the second dog, too. Right. So right. we'll give the movie that. Right. Because he just waits outside while she tells him to hold on. Right. That's true. Yep, yep, yep. And then she does the zip line. Mm-hmm. Zip lines into him, uh, sh- shoving a broken ruler into his chest. <laughs> yeah, dude. And then jumps on his back and stabs him with a whole bunch of pencils, which I've accidentally stabbed my palm with a pencil before. Yep. Oh, Had to go too. to the doctor to get the the tip of the pencil taken out of my hand. Because it was dude. in the old days when people worried about lead poisoning. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and uh yeah. So that hurt watching that scene. Yeah, sorry buddy. <laughs> it's okay. And then she grabs the ruler and slams it into his neck and then kicks it over and over again till it goes all the way through his neck. Yes. And that kills him. Yeah, <laughs> as it should. I feel like number 2 is mm-hmm. Hammond. Mhm. Oh, Hammond. So she sets oh, up a right. trap yes, at the yes. pier. There we go. Yeah. I was trying this to is the home. That. This is the home alone section. Yeah, right? that's exactly right. Yes. Yep. It was believable. Yeah. Yeah. I believe I that she set the the wire, uh, the the string that was impossible to see. And he fell right. onto a board with nails Yeah, that she laid out. Yeah. And then and then she slammed it, a board with nails, another one into his head. Oof, a couple yeah. times, but then he grabbed that from her and then like bashed her in the forehead with it. Yeah, but she was OK. That's a little hard to believe. 13 there year old go. getting that hit in the little, head yep. with a board. You're going to be. They, yeah. Yep. Hurting or or out. <laughs> but she does the action movie thing where he slams the board down and she like scoots back so that yep. it lands between her legs and. And then they tussle, and he falls into the water, and then she backs up the boat and kills him with the engine of the boat. The propellers just destroys him. <laughs> oh, dude. I, I knew that was coming, too. The second she gets in the boat, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I was like, I have a feeling this is going to get real bloody. And yeah. <laughs> oh. And then, of course, Dominic. Yes. Dominic's about to strangle her she he is strangling her yes he's about to kill her Mm -hmm. and that's when apex has his second change of heart third change of heart (laughs) yeah however and (laughs) tackles dominic and they get into a scuffle she runs and gets the lawnmower (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's like it's more like a go-kart kind of thing with a lawnmower attachment on it yeah yep exactly yeah and then she she drives it right over Kevin James as Apex gets out of the way. Yep. And oh boy, does and she... leaves it there on him. Yeah, on his head, where it just <laughs> destroys his head completely. Yeah. And then she moves and there's like nothing there. Like <laughs> yeah, it's like walking dead. <laughs> and then and then of course Apex, she just yeah. shoots him. Yep. Which was brilliant. Because yeah. I even thought that while watching it. I was like, please, this guy is having like which I'm grateful they didn't show him kill those two kids at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. But like he's having like this change of heart. He's like, no more kids after doing that. And like when he has these like moments where he's trying to help 
you know, the, the soon to be stepbrother and when he's trying to help um, Becky, I'm like, don't like this guy can't live. This guy just murdered two children today, like this day. Come on. And then when, when she grabs the gun and just blasts him like in a second, I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That was we needed that. <laughs> so it was a good moment. I loved it. <laughs> what did you think of my friend Joel McHale? Oh, dude, you got to tell everyone about Joel McHale. So I was going to pick up food for the girlfriend and myself. Mm -hmm. And I go up to the window to grab the food. And they say to hang on a second. They're still making it. And as I back away, another guy is in front of me and he I look over at him. I just look at his hat first because his hat Mm -hmm. had a Seahawks symbol on it and yes i'm a huge seahawks fan as you know yes we just lost a ton of listeners i'm sorry <laughs> hey we gained but some good too. get good riddance non-seahawk <laughs> fans anyway i asked him i said hey go hawks and then at that moment i looked at his face and i was like that's joel McHale." <laughs> but i did not i tried so hard to act nonchalant Mm -hmm. And we just talked about the Seahawks and the the upcoming draft and all that and nothing about anything else, just Seahawks. And he was so cool. And I almost felt like he was relieved to that. Somebody was talking to him about something other than, hey, hey, you're Joel McHale. Right. Yep. Totally. But I just yeah, it was that's it. And after I left, I was like, hey, have a good one. Go Hawks. Good luck (laughs) this season. And I walked away and I was like, oh, my God, that was Joel McHale. My goodness. <laughs> That's so called, awesome. Called the girlfriend right away. <laughs> you won't believe what happened. <laughs> so, yeah, I that know, was you, very cool. You posted something about it. And I like I sent I screenshot it and sent it to all of my family because everyone in my family knows Joel McHale. So, and they were like, what? They know him? No, no not personally. Oh, okay. They just know of. See, Joel because McHale. I know him personally now. Well, you're basically his best friend, so why don't you just yeah. do the podcast with him? Hi, I'm Scotty, and I'm Joel McHale. <laughs> and we sound Good. exactly the same. You do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my god! I could never do the podcast with him, buddy. Uh-huh. You're my Joel McHale. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, wow. you're my community. That means a lot, buddy. That that might be the best compliment I've ever received. I know. You just took off your glasses and you're I, like, you're, you're my, rubbing them off. Dry my tears. Yeah. I hit home. You're my Joel McHale. Gosh, don't say it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> How about this one, buddy? Lay it on me. We never found out what was in the box. I, yeah, I know. How'd you feel about that? Yeah, bitter, not bittersweet. That's not. Uh, half and half like i was as you know like uh i i don't like ambiguous yeah that's not true i usually don't like ambiguous endings or or when questions aren't answered this one i was okay with i still really did want to know and i'm kind of hoping that the sequel maybe says it just because i'm really curious what's what's in the box yeah Um, she has the key at the end right exactly so i'm like i i really want to know because he made it sound like this box is like the this is gonna be the thing that you know can cause mass genocide like i mean it, i'm like what is in that box Did like or whatever that? Maybe, well he didn't didn't say it but i mean the way he made it sound was like this will i mean it's gonna change the world i can i can oh i don't know he just makes he says all these weird things and i'm just like what is in that box like is it the ark of the covenant like i don't know what's happening but i don't know so i'm See, i i'm I'm okay with it, but I do want to know what was in it. Here's the thing. I didn't care. Fair. Okay. <laughs> I watched this movie and, you know, I, in fact, uh, somebody in our Facebook group, w- back when I mentioned, uh, I posted a story that The Wrath of Becky was coming out. Oh, yeah, yeah. And somebody in our Facebook group was very, very adamant about not liking Becky one because there were so many unanswered questions and he, he huh. was very mad that they never showed what was in the box. And I did not even remember what he was talking <laughs> about at the time. And then I watched it again this past week and I was like, Oh yeah, that's right. And it's because to me, 
it was just a misdirection. It was a mechanic, a vehicle. Yeah. Just to, just to get the white supremacists there. Totally. It didn't yep. matter to me what was in the box. It mattered to me what happened to Becky and her right. family. That's a good point. I mean, that it really was there to get them at that cabin. So I, I totally get that. But I still want to know. <laughs> Maybe we'll find out because, again... Well, how what did you how did you feel about the fact that she's walking around with a key around her neck that very clearly has a white supremacist dog whistle symbol on it? Yeah. Yeah. And nobody seemed to notice. Now that symbol, my friend, that symbol is actually a Norse symbol called a Valknut. Oh. I didn't and know. yeah, it's it's a Norse symbol. It has nothing to do with white supremacy or anything but racists nazis they yeah. they they appropriated different symbols a lot of norse symbols they appropriated right. and that's one of them so yeah. if you see a white person with that symbol on his body that's that's you know something to pause and think about right there. What I'm that saying. might be a red flag it might be a red flag <laughs> right there <laughs> so yeah so but nobody no adults saw that key and we're like, hmm, that's interesting. That's true. I actually didn't even think about that, I guess, or didn't put those two together. But that is, yeah, that's, you would think, especially since she's at that, I don't even know what, I, I, hospital at the beginning or end? I don't know. I felt like it at. was more of a police station. Maybe, okay, what, yeah, maybe, wherever she's at, well, yeah, you would think somebody might at least talk to them, talk to her about that, but. yeah. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I'm just going to go with it, man. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens in the sequel, right? Yeah, whenever we see it. Whenever we see it. I didn't know if we were going to bring this up yet, but the dog's death. You said we'll talk about it. I di It didn't bother me as much as other movies with the animal death. Okay, okay. Like every other movie, though, as soon as mm -hmm. I saw two dogs in this movie. Yep. I get a feeling of dread. Yes. I'm like, don't put dogs in a horror movie because now I don't want to see anything happen to them. Right. The a-hole shoots the dog, but he shoots the dog off camera. And then you right. just see the dog's body and the movie watcher in me, just like when I see people die in movies. Right, right. I know it's not real. I know it's a fake. As long as I didn't actually see the animal die. Right. I think I'm okay with it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah, exactly. It's a it's a movie and you can you can separate the two. And they didn't so. draw it out. True, you're right. They didn't. That's very true. I didn't like it. I don't want the dog to die. Right. But it didn't bother me as much as it like like in Firestarter. It didn't bother me as much as that right. scene. Yeah. Yikes. You know? Uh -huh. Yeah. So yeah, that was fine. And then D uh, yeah, Dora it and Diego. And then, yeah, when Apex, I, I really thought Apex killed Diego with that oh, punch. Yeah. And that was, I was like, Ugh. again, they did it well. They did. You see Apex punching, mm -hmm. but and you just hear the dog yelp, but you don't see like the fist make contact with the dog. That's true. You're right. Yep. I think that's pretty well done. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree. And I was glad, but I was still glad to see Diego. Oh, of course. Backup. I was like, oh, gosh, thank you. Of course. <laughs> Heck yeah, those were beautiful dogs. I know. Oh, and I one thing about the dog too that I did. Well, not the dog. I one thing I appreciated about, and I'm going to mention her name because we've seen her before. Oh, we have Amanda Bruegel who plays Kayla. Do you know which movie we saw her in in our? No, podcast? I do not. Infinity Pool. She was one of the group members. She was in Infinity Pool. Yeah. The reason I know because I remember watch. I watched Handmaid's Tale, and she's one of the main characters. Oh. So when we watched Infinity Pool, I was like, oh, Handmaid's Tale. And oh. I watched this, I was like, hey, there she is again. And uh, everybody out there, please, Infinity Pool is now on Hulu. You can go watch it if you haven't seen it yet and go listen to our episode where we discuss the movie. Yes. What did we think? Find out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, I like what she did, though, with uh, where the her son says something about, like, we were looking for Lulu. And the guy's like, Lulu, Becky. you know. 
or, or I'm sorry, <laughs> Becky. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, we're looking for Becky, and they're like, "Who's Becky? Who's Becky?" And she she kind of shushes her bo- her her son up and says, "You know, hey, that dog didn't hurt anybody or something like that." And I was like, "Oh, that was smart. That was a really good way to go get away from that subject." Pistol Pete up there shot Becky. That dog wasn't gonna hurt you. Becky was a sweet old thing. So yeah, that I, was I good that. because because up until that moment, I did not like Kayla. Yeah, yeah. You let I totally her walk agree. all over you. Like, I this, know. Whose business is it of yours, encroacher? Yeah. You're right. You 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 showed up here real recent, right after that death. So don't even. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Come on. And I agree. Yeah, I was like, Ugh, all right, you can get rid of her. <laughs> like, this is a horror movie. Take her. Yeah. But but I did. But after the yeah, well, did try and help. And I, yeah, I liked I liked her the rest of the movie. It was good. Yeah. Yep, I did too. Yeah. Even though she just kind of didn't really. She told her son not to feed the dog under the table, but the son kept doing it. And she didn't really get mad. Whatever. Anyway. Exactly. Yeah. But she was good. Yeah, she was. It's not her fault. It's the fault of the character and the way it's written, right? Exactly. No, she's great. I think she's a, I, I, she's a great actress. She's always, everything I've seen her in, she's been great. So, yeah, I think she's awesome. What was your reaction when when Dominic killed Jeff, her father? Oh, that sucked. <laughs> like, that was a bummer, dude. Surprise you? Yeah, for sure. I I knew it would. I, well, yeah, I figured it was going to happen, but I didn't think it'd be that quick, especially. I mean, I was like pretty early yeah. on in the movie. Yeah. Um, And especially because, I mean, it is Joel McHale. You know, he's got a name for himself. Usually they can. He might be in the movie a little longer, but it was quick. It was a quick. He wasn't there long. So, yeah, that definitely surprised me. Yeah. I yeah. remember I remember when I first saw it, I was like, whoa. Yeah. That's that's a thing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But again, it's it's that maybe that was the final, you know, the what straw that broke the camel's back and she goes crazy. I don't I'll tell you my favorite part of this movie though, pal. Lay it on me, dude. My boy Hammond. Dominic walks in with his eyeball hanging out and he <gasps> oh, tells God. Hammond to cut it off and Hammond grabs children's scissors to cut off his eyeball and it hurts so bad <laughs> what are you using <laughs> and then uh, dominic just grabs a big kitchen knife and yeah. cuts off his own eyeball oh that was gnarly Cause, though because he's a badass right that kevin james that was so gross though i yeah oh was... yeah that was gnarly oh dude i i don't like eye stuff eye stuff freaks me <laughs> out i'm like oh gosh what if it was an eye under the water I under the, the in this un, if it was the same scene but under the water like deep underwater. No. <laughs> Cuz you don't like Even that either. Worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that took you a second. Maybe you're over I it. I know. <laughs> Yay. Like, is this a movie we watched? <laughs> <laughs> the Deep House. Oh yeah. Man, what'd you think of the cinematography? Good, really good. I thought this was really there was some really I'm trying to remember where in the movie. No, it was towards the end. There's a couple shots of her outside the cabin mm-hmm. that were really cool. Like, would have made some really good posters, I felt like. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, definitely on board with cinematography on this. Absolutely. The DP is named Greta Zuzula. Nice. Right on. I'm not, I'm not really familiar with, but uh-uh. I loved the idea and the, the decision to juxtapose different scenes together, like like Kevin James walking into a doorway and then immediately cutting to Becky walking out of another doorway. I like that too. There was a lot of stuff like that where it just intercut between Dominic and Becky. Right. Now, is it saying that they're more alike than they think? That's what I was wondering too. I thought or that is too. it just saying that they're, they're going to be nemeses? Right. Is that, is that the right? Is that the plural nemesis? for nemesis? Nemesis? Yeah, nemesis. 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 I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I liked that very much. Yeah, those were really, especially the, yeah, it was most, a lot of it was at the beginning. It was really cool. It was very cool. I liked that a lot. And then, of course, shout out 
as always, to the composer. Yeah, dude. Of the score of the movie, Nima Fakrara, I think is how you say her name. Right on. Or him. It might be a guy. I'm not sure. Yeah. But I like the music. I It yeah. was more, definitely more synth uh, atmosphere music. Yep, for sure. But it did have melody to it. It did have, it wasn't memorable, but it was, it mm-hmm. was good. It was more than just some other atmospheric horror movie scores. I would agree with that. Yep, for sure. So I liked I liked this score. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't orchestral, which is what I really like. Yeah, I me too. I'm with you. But yeah, I liked it. Yeah, I I agree. I it wasn't super memorable, but it definitely was fine. Like it worked for what it was. Yeah, I'm good with that. Uh, The last thing I want to mention is that the directors, Mm -hmm. Jonathan Malott and Carrie Mernian. That's right. They also directed a movie that is on my list, my fun with horror movie list called Cooties. Oh, I didn't know they did Cooties. I know that. I haven't seen it, but I know that movie. Yeah, I actually bought the movie and I still haven't watched it because (laughs) I kept thinking, hmm, maybe I'll pick that for fun with horror sometime. Oh, doggy. I love it. That's cool. Speaking of fun with horror. Yeah. Are you ready for three questions? Let's do this. Who would cross the bridge of death must answer me these questions three. Uh, question number one. Yes. What What did you think was the best kill or death in Becky? So this might surprise you. Maybe. maybe because there's some there's really good deaths in this. But I went with Cole because I loved the fact that she used these school supplies that are essentially meant for kids to do these arts and crafts, but use them as this, as these insane weapons and destroyed the first guy. I mean, it was kind of our first, not kill, but first gruesome kill in the movie. And I was like, oh my gosh, that was incredible. So I'm going to go with Cole. That did not surprise me at all, my friend. Oh, right on. Okay. Because it was a good kill. I thought you were about to say something like Apex or, or Jeff, the dad. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> that would have surprised me. But no, Cole was a good death. All right. What about think, you, though? I think Cole, Hammond, and then Dominic were all really good kills. Nice. Yeah, for sure. And I'm, but I'm going to go with Dominic because yeah. it's not part of the actual kill. But come on, he had his eye poked out with a key. <laughs> right. And it was hanging out, and he had to cut it off because it was just hanging out of his head. Oh, my gosh. But the whole, my goodness, the first time I saw this movie, the one thing that stuck with me the most was Mm -hmm. the lawnmower on his head. Yep. Yep. So I got to go with Dominic there. Nice. I will say about that death, I won't say the movie, but you and I went and saw a movie in theaters where there was another lawnmower kill. Mm. Again, I won't say what if people haven't seen it, but that one... That one's still it was Toy I Story still three, right? That. It was Toy Story three. Yeah, Sid. Yeah. Sid comes we, with the lawnmower. We can say that. We can say that. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, and uh, gruesome, <laughs> gruesome. <laughs> I love the lawnmower death in Toy Story three. Yeah, it's one of the best. Uh, that that put that in our R rating real quick, but uh, worth it. Question number two, my friend. Yes. Did you think Becky was scary? So not for me. But I would say that if people are nervous around, you know, um, home invasion type movies, I could see this definitely being nervous for people or people would get nervous about it. But for me, I wasn't scared. What about you? Me neither. Yeah. I think it was a little bit tense, but I've also seen home invasion movies that were more (laughs) intense than this. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this is more just a good revenge movie than a scary movie yeah that's a good way to put it yep that comes that leaves us to uh that's something i don't know what i'm trying to say that leads us to question (laughs) number three yes did you have fun with horror my friend i did i did have fun this is a good one it was a lot of fun to watch i'm glad you yeah i had fun with horror all right i thought it was a good movie becky yeah becky there once was a little girl who had a little curl right in the middle of her forehead. 
When she was good, she was very, very good. But when she was bad, she was horrid. All right, buddy. I have to admit, I I had an idea for what you might pick this week. But you just said I need to look up my movie or something like that. And now I'm I'm thrown off. I'm like, maybe I don't have this. I don't know. I have no idea what you're picking, man. And I love it. I love this moment because I don't know what you are going to pick for our next movie. So, buddy, when you're ready, tell me. What are we watching? What if I didn't pick The Wrath of Becky? What if I pick something else? All right. Whatever you want, man. No, I'm going to pick The Wrath of Becky. Ah, okay, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Our next movie is The Wrath of Becky. Came out in 2023. That means this year. It was directed by Matt Angel and Suzanne Coote. Cool. And it stars Lulu Wilson again as Becky. Stars Sean William Scott mm-hmm. and Denise Burse. And I'll tell you, buddy. Yeah. I know nothing. Absolutely nothing about this movie. I don't know. Yeah, I really don't either. I do know this. Is don't that... tell me. No, 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 no. no. Okay. No, right. it's a behind All the right. scenes thing. Totally. Un... Yeah, trust okay. me. Okay. So very recently I was thinking about just my days in Hollywood, L.A. And I was like, man, you know who was really a sweetheart was the casting director for the Nickelodeon show I did. And her name was Jenny Treadwell. So I like looked her up and I was like, I'm just going to write her a message and just say, hey, you were really nice. And I appreciated that. Guess who was the casting director for Wrath of Becky? Of course. Same person. Same person. Like, as always with our podcast, whenever there's just weird coincidences, always. So now, now <laughs> what was the name of that Nickelodeon show? <laughs> Victorious. <laughs> and what character were you, Andrew? <laughs> I was Eli. <laughs> <laughs> Best thing in the world is that I went down a rabbit hole Googling you <laughs> a week ago just because I, I forget. I think I was just trying to find some picture from your past to post or something like that. Right. Yeah. I think. Yeah. That's what you said. Something and all of a sudden I, I opened up this, 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 <laughs> all this stuff about Victorious and there were questions about the show somebody had written. And one of them mm. was, why didn't. Why wasn't Eli or who, something like the person that wrote it thought that you were going to be a main character for well, the I, continuation of the show? Like they wanted you to be. Oh, I did, too. And I was until about a week ago, a week before they started filming again. They like, got my character. <sighs> I know that's terrible. But you know what, buddy? What? If they hadn't cut your character, you would have been a big star. <laughs> Uh, wait, have I had I met you yet? I, don't, I hadn't met you. No, yet. I was thinking that. No, we probably would have never met because I would have quit never the coffee met. shop. Yeah, you would have never had to work it, or yeah, you would have quit the coffee shop. Right, you never would have moved back home. Right, to Washington State. Yep, and we probably wouldn't be doing this podcast. I know, I know. So, I think I think that that is a little bit victorious myself. I agree. No, I I know. At the time, I my heart was broken, but looking back, I'm like, man, good. <laughs> Everything yeah. worked out awesome. Everything worked out great. Now you have Enzo. I know. Yeah, I would never have had Enzo. Never had met my wife. I mean, life it, it needed to happen. It just needed to. It just needed to. <laughs> but anyway, there's my tip. It was, it. It was the silly. fate of the furious, <laughs> or the fate of the victorious. Too fate, too victorious. Too fate, too victorious. <laughs> okay, everybody. Thank you for listening to this episode of Fun with Horror. Yes, thank you, everyone. We love you. We love you. Uh, if you'd like to reach out to us, actually, you know what? If you want to do us a solid, here's the thing. Yeah. We've got a lot of listeners right now, and we love every single one of you. Yes, true. But you know how we could get more listeners? If people went on to Apple Podcasts and Mm. they wrote a nice little review. Yeah. You write a review. It can it can even be a four star review if if you if there are quibbles you have with our podcast. (laughs) But just write us leave us a little rating and a review. It Mm. it helps us get the podcast out there to more people. Yes, please, please. So please do that. 
Otherwise, find us on social media. We're there. We love you all. We do. We love each and every so one of you. So much. So much. We love you more than Becky. You're, you are our Joel McHale's. Yes. <laughs> you are all our Joel McHale's. <laughs> Good night. I see your potential. The raw clay waiting to take shape. Look, we had a rocky start, but that's all behind us. With the right guidance, one day you'll be able to look back on this and see that it was a great moment in your life. Real turning point. If you just let me help. You can help by shutting your face. <laughs>